All right, hi again. Welcome back. Attorney Steve Vondren here. We are talking in this video about the equitable defense of latches, latches as some people call it. So um, this is a weird one. You know, people ask me all the time, what is latches? What is latches? Well, in court, in a court of law, you have statute of limitations, okay? So you may have one year to bring a personal injury claim. You may have three years to bring a copyright claim. There's a lot of different statute of limitations. Everything's got its own. Every state has its own. And so you need to look those up and see what they show. So um, first and foremost, this is general legal information only and not legal advice or substitute of legal advice. So let's get with it. So latches, latches, whatever they call it, people say it never wins. I've tried it. It never wins. Well, it's not going to win in every case, okay? There is some United States Supreme Court jurisprudence on this that says Latches is not a defense in a patent infringement or a copyright infringement claim, and there might be others. There might be other claims that have a strict statute of limitations that you, as long as the claim, and just so you know, statute of limitations means this is the longest time that you have to bring the claim. It could be two years, could be one year, could be three years, could be four years. Who knows? It can be whatever the law says it is in your jurisdiction. So, um, people will ask me, well, what is latches in? Now, in general, latches means, you know, even though they're within the plaintiff, okay, even though the plaintiff is within the um, statute of limitations for whatever the cause of action is, as long as they're within that, they're okay. But latches says, yeah, but unless they have been sitting on their rights and if they've been causing undue damage or prejudice to a defendant. So, you know, here's an example of that. I'm going to go over a quick case just to try to illustrate it. It can get a little complicated, but, you know, latches is an equitable defense. It's an affirmative defense. You raise it as a defendant and you prove it, okay? And so you have to have some facts to help you along. Now, here's a case that was really interesting. It was called Cosmetic Warriors. We'll just call them CWL, Cosmetic Warriors versus Pinket, Pinket clothing, okay? And this was a case from the Ninth Circuit. The Ninth Circuit is going to cover all your western states, you know, Washington, Oregon, California, Montana, Utah, Arizona, those kinds of things, okay? So this is a Ninth Circuit case. And they came out in this case and actually found for the defendant and said, you know what? Latches does apply. This is a case where we will look at the doctrine of latches and, and the defendant has shown the undue weighting and the undue um, prejudice. So this is a clothing case dealing with clothing companies. So the brand was Lush. It was called Lush. Pinkett Clothing had the brand, had the trademark for the name Lush. Now, Cosmetic Warriors, you know, knew, I mean, what happens is these trademarks go out for publication and that means... Um, other companies that are interested that have trademark lawyers or follow with them to sells, they can find out if there's a trademark, you know, being registered that's close to yours. And if, if there is, you need to defend your trademarks. I mean, that's just, everybody knows that it's trademark 101, uh, that you have to keep an eye out and defend your trademark. So, um, the defendant Pinkett clothing had registered for Lush for clothing line in 2010, and there was no opposition by Cosmetic Warriors or CWL. So from that time in 2010, being that they got that original trademark, and trademarks are usually you know good and less contested, a lot like a patent, but um, the defendant argued, you know, well, the trademark incontestability period is five years. That means it's not until five years, that would have been 2015, until a trademark actually becomes incontestable under the Lanham Act, the federal Lanham Act. So um, what happened is Pinkett was, was doing its thing in 2010. They got the trademark. They started investing heavily in their trademark and their brand. That's what you would expect someone to do. And then later in 2014, which was in the, with, within the five years, CWL all of a sudden seeks to register its Lush trademark on its own. They, wanna, they want the Lush mark. So um, ultimately they were denied and they filed suit in Los Angeles saying, what the heck? 
you know, we were denied, but, you know, their mark is not incon incontestable. It's only been four years. You know, it's like the statute of limitations is five years. I should still be able to contest that. Well, the court said, you know, you could have done something. You had four years here, and, you know, they had registered the mark Lush, and now you're kind of coming late to the game. Now you want to register Lush. Now you want to create a big deal about it, and you're claiming somehow you're in within the five-year test for incontestability. And the court said, you know, that may be the test for incontestability five years, and after five years, Pinkett clothing would have the incontestable mark under the federal Lanham Act. But you've been kind of sitting around doing nothing. It's not the same thing as the statute of limitations. And you should have done something earlier because what happened is you sat on your rights, you waited too long. Pinkett clothing put a lot of time and money into establishing its Lush brand. And now you want to stop all the, the wheels of progress because now four years later you have a claim. So the court didn't like that. Um, the court said this is a latches issue, latches, whatever you want to call it, and the equitable defense prevailed. Under the Lanham Act, there is no statute of limita limitations on trademark infringement. So that's why maybe it was different than the copyright, the Supreme Court's ruling on the copyright and patent infringement. So that gives you, gives you an example of how the Lachey's defense works. You may want to raise it in your case. It may apply, it may not apply, but if somebody's waiting around too long, they're, they're basically sitting on their rights, if you can argue that and show some facts, and they're prejudicing a defendant, you know, materially, financially, or otherwise, you can say, judge, I mean, this case should have been brought a long time ago. We've been doing business for a long time. Now they bring it, you know, three years, four years, five years later. So that's an overview of what the Lachey's defense is. I hope that's provided some general guidance for you. Again, not legal advice. If you need some help, you can find more information. We have a nice affirmative defense checklist that we are building on our page, I'm going to put out a guide to affirmative defense, a little checklist, um, but I'm not there yet. I'm probably another six months or a year away, but it's coming, and we keep building out our page. So search the web, attorneysteve.com, and we will have some more information for you, okay? I hope you like this. If you like this, give me a thumbs up. Give me some comments. It always helps. Better yet, subscribe and join over, I think we're over 8,500 people now, so that's quite a few. We're over 8,500 people. Join us. We try to make the law more understandable and more accessible. Okay, that's our motto. Anyway, uh, have a great weekend. Turn your Steve out. I got to run. Lots to do this weekend, and we'll talk again. Take care now.